What's going on everybody and welcome to another unconventional neural networks tutorial video. In this video we're going to be changing gears a little bit and trying to get neural networks to do math. So even though computers are actually really good at doing math, certainly better than humans, uh, the problem is with neural networks, neural networks are actually kind of bad at doing math. And, and the reason for this is neural networks are really good at finding nonlinear relationships, whereas you know most basic forms of math are actually linear relationships. <laughs> so neural networks are historically kind of kind of bad at, at doing just that. Um, but for the most part, neural networks are just bad at math, period. So my thought in curiosity is, could we figure out a way to get neural networks to be able to do math pretty decently? And if so, then we could continue to, to increase the complexity of that math. And my ending curiosity is how well, if, if you could ever use a neural network to do something like say, uh, you know, break some forms of encryption or something like that. Um, that would be a, a curious case. So, so anyways, uh, what we're going to start with is just really basic. Uh, can we get it to do addition? So, um, so let's go ahead and get into that. And uh, to start, we have to decide on a way that we're going to do this. So, my forward thinking is that I want, I want to eventually get to the point where we allow for a, a, a variable number of input and a variable number of output. And we might want to have maybe, you know, something plus something, sure. But we also might want to have something plus something divided by something. But we don't want all the inputs to be something plus something divided by something. We want to have lots of variability here. Um, so in order to do that, the probably the best way of doing that would be like the sequence to sequence library. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is we're just going to use um, the what we've been using for the chatbot. So it's just simply sequence to sequence code and rather than doing words and doing like word embeddings and stuff like that, we're gonna make it a character based model so each character has value. And then basically the way it's read by the machine is, is a sequence of those characters. So it could be any character. In this case, it's always gonna be numbers or certain operators like divide plus and so on. So to get started, uh, what we're going to do is head over to the GitHub project for the chatbot. Um, I'll put a link in the description, someone remind me if I forget. Otherwise, it's just github.com and it's Daniel Kukiela and then nmt-chatbot. Go ahead and clone it or do a git clone or whatever you need to do and get it. If, uh, for whatever reason, it has changed, uh, where is, I want to make sure it's on screen. Uh, the last commit here, the one that we're using, is C503D2C. I linked to it in the er, in the text-based version of the tutorial. So if things are not working the way that I'm explaining them or whatever, then code to this exact commit. So uh, once you have that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and extract it. Okay, I'm going to bop in here. And probably the first thing you should do is open up a command prompt and do a pip install uh, dash r, I think, uh, requirements, requirements.txt. Let me just make sure that runs. It sure does. I'm just going to break it. Um, and make sure you have all the requirements. So once you've done that, you're probably ready to go. So. What we're going to start with is basically, you know, this all has like, we need data that basically looks like this. It has, you know, it creates a from and then points to a to. So we'll just look at this. This is chat data. So a lovely uh, <laughs> start to the chat data. Anyway, that's the chat data <laughs> and it points to this, which would be the responses. Well, there's no reason why we can't actually say in the train dot from there's no way, no reason why we can't say five plus two, and then in the train dot two, we just say seven, right? There, we could do that, and then the model could just be a uh, character level model, uh, so we wouldn't have to necessarily just do five plus two. It could be five plus twenty-two, and so on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop. I guess we'll, first we'll just delete everything in here because there's no reason for this uh, there. And then, mm, I don't see any reason to write all this out with you guys. I, I, I just assume at this point, no one following is like still rudimentary Python. So I'm not gonna waste y'all's time. So I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, math. How about, yeah, we'll call it mathdata.py. That's fine. 
let me open it with Sublime Text. So this this will be in the text-based version of the tutorial. Again, there will be a link in the description so you can just take it from there. Uh, so I'm going to copy, paste that in. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what's going on here? First of all, we just specify how many samples in total do we want. Right now it's 300,000. You could make this, you know, anything you want. I mean, it could be 3 million. Um, then this is the, the largest plausible value we're going to deal with right now. Uh, so we'll say 100,000. So basically it could be up to 100,000. So 50,000 plus 2, and there might be 25,000 plus, I don't know, 7 or something like that. So it could be any number within here, and then we're using random to randomly pick some numbers. This is how many total samples, and then basically I've just got made this little simple function here where to generate the pair that we want, string in, string out, you just say, hey, I want you to generate a random addition. I want you to generate a random subtraction. So then what it does is it just creates, you know, like a, a string that's literally just is five plus two, and then the output is also a string of seven, okay? So that's all that's happening there. And then here, I'm just testing it. Uh, I'm not, we don't really have to test it, but I mean, I guess we could just comment this out just so you can get an idea of what you're looking at. Uh, test pair, uh, stranger. So it looks like it should just run with the basics. Yeah, so here's an example. And so this is the input, this is the output. We could run it again. You can see input, output, and currently it's always add. But you could also have, you know, subtract, for example, and there you go. So then what we're going to do is uh, come back. Let me do this. Comment this out again. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate over the samples. And we're just going to simply, um, right now, we're going to just do addition. The question is, can we just do addition? If we could do addition, let's make it a little more complex. Let's do all of them. Let's do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, and then if we could do all, all of those, then the next question would be, can we do more complex things? Like, you know, could we get to the point where we could do something like, I don't know, 55 divided by 7 plus 3 minus 5 divided by this, right? Like, could we get to the point where we could get an algorithm to to do that kind of math, that's a little more complex. Uh, and then from there, you could also do, we could try to do things like, you know, 5x plus 3 equals, I don't know, this, and then get the machine to always solve for x, right? That would be even more complex of, an, of a, or at least likely more. I'm not actually sure that would be more complex for the neural network to, to figure out, but anyway. Those are just some of my ideas. For now, we're just going to do simple addition. Can we get this to work? So, uh, the other thing I want to do, I'm actually going to change this to about 500, just so, so we can actually get a more, and in fact, mm, I kind of want to do like 1,000. Uh, 500 should be good enough. We'll, we'll go with 500. Uh, okay, so we've got math data. It's going to run, and it's going to populate all to all these little files. And the reason why we're doing all these is just so that uh, we can... Um, so it just mimics what the chatbot wanted. So we're just kind of hacking that chatbot code, which is funny because the, actually the chatbot is actually quite a bit of just a hack of the neural machine translation. So we're not actually doing any translation either. So we're kind of hacking on top of a hack here, but that's okay. So um, that's kind of the whole point of this series. So let me save this and let's go ahead and run it. It'll probably take a little bit to, to get through everything. Let's just move it aside, make sure um, I guess it wouldn't matter, but so hopefully that'll be populated. I think probably, I don't know, 3 million should go pretty quick. I feel like it should be done relatively quickly. Okay, there it goes. Cool. Took about 18 seconds. So now we've got this data in new data. So the next steps that we need to do, just these are just the steps of working with this package, is we need to go into setup let's go into um, settings.py. Uh, so usage is editing with idle. Anyway, coming back over here. Um, so the vocab size, uh, basically we need it to be, you've got zero through nine, so that's 10. And then we have the addition symbol, which is a plus. So that should be 11 total vocab. And when we set it to that, that means it will be character level and it will get nothing else. If you made it bigger, 
Um, it would add to the vocab numbers it sees more commonly, which in this case would just kind of be random. Um, I don't really see any point in doing that. I don't think you're going to get any benefit uh, from that. Uh, then for BPE, uh, we, we don't want anything to do with that right now, so set that to false. And then the, the embedded tokenizer, also set that to false. These are really chat. Um, these are really language-specific things uh, that we really don't need to be uh, dealing with here. Then for the epoch lines, um, I'm trying to decide if I really want to keep this. I almost think you might want to do like two epochs at this, but I think actually all I'm going to do for now, I just kind of want to see in general how this works. Like we might not even finish this to like full accuracy or anything. I'm just curious if it'll work. Uh, so we'll do maybe two epochs at that. Um, and then, and in fact, let's not even do that. Let's just do this. And then it goes to the one, and then it has it. So we got one, two, three, four, five total epochs. How much data did we do? Three million or 300,000? Three million. That should be good enough. Uh, we can always come back later and change it. Also, I made test size 500, so we'll change that too. Uh, everything else I think I'll leave. Oh, well, we should probably change the size of the network. <laughs> um, let me see what I did in my notes. I'm not sure. I don't even know if I did change it. Let's do, I mean, 2 by 512 should be fine. Again, this is just like addition. Um, I'm going to do like 5 by 128, though. And then I don't think I'm going to mess with anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and save settings. And then once we've done that, we need to run uh, the prepare.py or prepare data pie. Uh, you can't run that within the setup directory though. Come back out one directory, open up a command prompt. Let's type in uh, Python setup slash prepare underscore data dot pie. And we'll go ahead and create that data. Basically all it does for you is create your vocab, does your embedding stuff. Um, actually, I guess because we did, I think it's just two different forms of embedding. Um, anyways, it basically just processes all your data. Mostly what we're looking for is vocab and tokenizing our data. Um, so we'll wait for that. I guess everyone's going to have to sit through this, so might as well sit together. I don't think anyone's going to go any quicker than I'm going. I need more tea. Okay, all done. Now, uh, once we've done that, uh, we should be good. Like we should be good to actually run the, the train. So let's go ahead Python train.py. Of course, we don't have NMT. You have to grab that recursively. Arg. Oh, I'm just not like on grabbing it on Windows. So so what you should have done is when you do the git clone, like git clone dash dash recursive, right? Uh, that's what you want to do. Uh, let me grab that. So I didn't even do that. Because basically we want just the NMT package. Give me one second. Okay. So I'm going to pull up that chatbot code. We're just going to go to this the NMT here. I'm going to go ahead and clone that. Uh, let me pause this. And then I'll drag it over. Okay. So I just grabbed it here. I'm going to go ahead and extract it here. So it should contain this, which is the directory, and then hopefully right, yeah, right in here. So I'm just actually going to just co copy that and just move it into here. Or in fact, actually what we could do, let's just uh, delete this directory, and then we'll just rename this directory to that. Okay. When you don't have git installed. <laughs> All right. Python train.py take two. Looks good. Here we go. Beginning to train, train, uh-oh. Ah, okay, I always get smacked by this. Okay, so because we're using a bi-directional uh, neural network, we, we can't do what I just attempted to do. Let me just go ahead and delete everything here. Um, it needs to be an even number. So let's go into setup. I swear, I get tagged by that all the time. <laughs> I really should have learned by now, but anyway, so let's do six, okay, okay. All right, take three. We got it this time. We can do it. Come on. Uh, if you're on like a smaller GPU, actually, you know what? This should fit about any GPU. This stuff, any pretty much anybody can follow along with it. You shouldn't use very much VRAM at all. Training. I just want to see it start stepping through the data. And if it does start stepping, um, I'll probably... 
I kind of want to like pause and like let it go through a bunch of training and then I'll start back or something like that or unpause the recording. I can't really decide what I want to do there if I want to just pick up the next tutorial uh, with with how that goes. Uh, I think I'm going to stop it here and then we'll go in the next tutorial. I'll kind of go over the results with what we had and then figure out what we want to do from there. So that's what I think we're going to do. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, something going wrong for you, whatever, uh, feel free to leave those below. If you're enjoying this content, feel free to support at pythonprogramming.net slash support. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.